Now I'll hand over to Travis, who's one of our CFAs, so has done a lot of study. Right. Very intelligent young man. So you better listen to what he talks about. Thanks very much, Darren. Um, just as we start, it's probably worth sort of maybe not going forward straight away, but we might actually go backwards a little bit into uh, history and have a bit of a look about how uh, basically the difference between the Liberals and Labor, or I call it the Rudd, the Rudd-Gillard era. Um, in effect, you can see here Macmillan Shakespeare. Now, they're a company that does salary packaging, and many of you would have heard, um, and I've talked about in other presentations, how the Labor government, without consultation, has really come in and decided to say, well, we're going we're gonna to change the FBT rules around salary, salary packaging. And uh, what happened was Macmillan Shakespeare peaks out at $18. The market starts to get wind of some of the changes. They go into a trading halt, and then they come out of the trading halt, and they fall down to a, what was a low. It's uh, $9 there, but they got intraday of 675 And it ends up being around about $800 million wiped off the capital of Macmillan Shakespeare without really any consultation from the Labor government. And that, that's really what we were seeing and back when they were, when they were in power. And, really making sure they, they really didn't consult very well and you could see there was a little bit of policy on the run. As a result, um, Macmillan Shakespeare became a proxy for a, coal, a coalition victory. Subsequently, the share price slowly moved up and ended up trading around about $13. Um, and just after that actually came down in price um, after they did get elected because the market had, had already already sort of factored that in. But this situation really nutshells the two, two sorts of differences between Labor and, and the coalition government. So I'll go through some of the policies uh, sort of in a little bit of detail, um, just to try and give you a bit of an understanding on how we see the uh, coalition government and really how that implements some of, the, uh, some of the decisions that we'll make in regards to what goes into your portfolios. So one of the things, obviously, that's happening is the corporate tax rate is going to be 28.5%. And that's, uh, while that would, not, that would seem to be a good, uh, a good thing for small business in particular, because there's, there's 3,200 companies um, that will pay the 1.5% maternity levy. Um, and the small and medium businesses that are going to do quite well through that. And they're some of the major employers. The problem with it is that it actually wipes off what's available in franking credits for you, the people that rely on the income. So what we've seen here is if you compare, uh, if you're in pension phase, if you have a look, if you've got a dollar of fully frank dividend, comes with, currently comes with 43 cents in franking credits, and under the coalition plan, the franking credits would reduce to 40 cents. So you go from what was previously at current rates, 143, down to $1.40. Uh, if you're just in super phase, $1.21 down to $1.19. So we think it's about uh, three cents on a dollar worth, a dollar's worth of dividends, or close to sort of two, two and a half, three, three and a half percent. Um, so you can see that's that's a bit of an issue, but I guess there is a, there is also another benefit to that in that companies that have made a lot of profits in recent times. I've actually got the ability, basically they've got franking credit balances <coughs> that they've stored up over the years. So if they've got large franking credit balances, they're actually incentivised to pay them out um, over the next, um, over the sort of the next year before this, uh, before the maternity levy comes in. So if you've got franking credits, you need more profit after 2015, you need more profits to actually pay out that same amount of dividends. So we, we're sort of expecting that there's a possibility that there's potentially special fully frank dividends that will come out. Um, so for example, CBA's franking credit balance, um, they've got $742 million in credits, which is the largest uh, largest bank, ANZ 590, uh, sorry, Westpac 590, ANZ 386 and NAB 149. And the other companies we see that have got potential to pay out um, large special fully frank dividends, uh, Harvey Norman, um, has got a large franking balance, but will not pay a special dividend. Premier Reese, Washington, uh, Washington H. Sol Pats, and Brickworks. Now, an area that we we focus on um, pretty intently, um, basically because the characteristics of um, LICs, uh, they're diversified. They invest in good quality companies, which we always talk about when you've had discussions with your advisor. Um, we really like to have these in 
in the portfolios because they, they've got low management costs. You know, for, really, when you compare it to um, managed funds, these, these uh, companies tend to have really, really low management costs, perhaps around 0.1 or 0.2%. Now, what, we sh what we're showing here is the large franking, uh, franking balances on a per share basis, which is this line here. If you have a look at AFI and Argo, they've got 8.6 cents, 3.8 cents, but Milton Corp's got 71 cents, and their dividend is 80, 84 cents. Um, so there's a, Argo, AFI, and Milton are the, are the three companies that we've got on our list. And we've also followed Brickworks pretty closely, but you can see there's really big potential there for Milton to pay out a, a special dividend before the end of uh, end of this financial year. So a couple of other policies that the government, uh, the now coalition government, is looking to introduce. Um, electric, elect, oops, sorry, electricity prices have risen 9.6% uh, in the five years to 2011-2012. I got my quarterly bill um, <laughs> last week and I'm sure you've all felt the same pain. Um, I couldn't quite believe the amount that it was. And um, really, the five year period before that, uh, the annualised rate, 9.6% is phenomenal when you compound it. 2.7% is obviously a whole heap lower. Um, and some of the other, if the government actually does go ahead and remove the carbon tax, how they do it's up to question. But uh, companies without, uh, without another carbon policy, companies that will do well, uh, AGL Energy, um, they own Loy Yang. Uh, basically, Loy Yang is the biggest uh, brown coal um, energy power station in Australia. It produces a base load power for, for most of Victoria um, and they're, they're potentially going to gain. Um, Origin Energy is similar, um, not that they've got a big power plant, but they obviously generate a lot of energy. Um, BHP, uh, uh, Rio, uh, Junior Miners, and all of the transporters, uh, Toll, Qantas, uh, Virgin, uh, all of those companies. and. Really, companies that need to transport stuff from obviously from A to B, a to B uh, are going to have a uh, are going to get some benefit out of uh, no carbon tax and no replacement policy. Um, Harvey Norman, West Farmers, and Woolworths are all retailers, and they all, they're all going to benefit from lower transport costs. Now, this one's a bit of a contentious one: uh, the mining resources rent tax or the, the super profit tax for the miners. Um, really. In removing having a liberal a liberal government really removes the uh, the possibility of a of a super tax um, for some of the other areas like the banks in particular uh, the banks were potentially one of the areas that uh, the, the uh, Labor government was looking to uh, to tax significantly and really it was that wealth transfer from companies that were doing well to areas of the economy that weren't doing so well and really that that actually has obviously dented the confidence when Labor was around. We really want to see that the confidence really start to pick up and I think even though it's only been a week and a bit, um, I think you've already seen a couple of things out there in the economy. Um, BHP and Rio, the, the super profits tax was really designed to hit them and they never paid uh, any tax at all, but it was actually the cost for the preparation to have to pay that. Um, those costs are removed and while they're probably not that significant on, on a BHP scale, um, it is definitely an efficiency gain for the sector. Um, so investor confidence is, is, has been partially restored by the removal of this and, and really how, how the uh, coalition <coughs> government goes in and then implements that, um, how they look to the rest of the economy and really the confidence that people have in that they're actually going to be able to build stuff for the future is going to be a key on how, they, uh, how, they benefit, how companies benefit. Um, the superannuation guarantee um, the coalition government's going to delay uh, superannuation rises. They're going to keep it at nine, keep the current rate at 9.25% for two years, and that means that the full 12% rate for superannuation won't be implemented till 2021-22. Um, obviously, it puts companies that are reliant on that superannuation pool actually ourselves. Um, is, we're not going to be in uh, such a good spot as we would have been previously. Obviously, the amount of money coming into the superannuation system. But also, uh, Perpetual is going to have lower funds under management. They're not going to have as much money, uh, money to manage. And com computer share, there's going to be less money around in the big super funds for different corporate activity, particularly in Australia. Um, lower trading volumes uh, for the ASX. 
the schooner were knocked that around a bit, and uh, lower superannuation savings generally for the banks. So there's a couple of things also around um, nation building. There's obviously a large amount of infrastructure in the, the coalition's policies. Um, and some of those projects include the, uh, the North-South Corridor here in Adelaide, Great Ocean Road, Swan Valley, and companies to benefit. We really think uh, United Group, which has had a bit of a torrid time of it over the last, the last year, the last six months a year, Worley Parsons and Monodelphus. And, and we think it's good for the small businesses. Now you'll note we haven't put in um, Leighton and Lendlease. Now there's an, there's an issue with Leighton and Lendlease in the fact that they've they've organised uh, a couple of deals with the unions, um, and they've been actually excluded from some of the contracts in Victoria because of the deals that they've made with the unions. The current government, uh, coalition government, is not going to be really favourable to what's been happening. Uh, they don't like the cartel type agreements and would rather see um, see smaller businesses. Uh, benefit from that. A um, couple of, uh, yeah, so that just continues on. Really, it's probably more about, this slide's more about the uh, coalition health policy. Just a couple of other minor things. Um, the coalition, one of the policies was to increase the efficiencies for CSL, for um, companies trying to develop drugs and CSLs <coughs> and distribute them. CSL's got a great spot there and uh, nursing education. Uh, Ramsey owns heaps of Australia a lot of Australia's hospitals and will really benefit out of that. Perhaps not in the short term, but uh, in the long term. So um, the other part, as I think Daryl mentioned it, in regards to house prices, you would have seen already uh, just partly as a factor of interest rates. Uh, low interest rates obviously stimulate <coughs> building activity, but also you need confidence. You can have low rates and the reason low rates weren't really working over the last um, last sort of three or four months is because there was no confidence. That confidence has come back through and you can start to see if you've been watching any of the papers. The property market is apparently up and running again and uh, clearance rates are pretty high. But it's that confidence factor that's really coming through into, into that market and we'd like to see it come through um, into the share market as well. But uh, the property, property uh, market is picking up and companies that will benefit out of that are Stockland, CSR, James Hardy, Borrell, and Adelaide Brighton Cement. Now, just because we mentioned some of these companies doesn't mean we should all rush out and buy them either because um, some of it's priced in and some of it's not going to happen for a long time. And Macmillan Shakespeare is probably the one that has got the most to benefit out of a coalition government, but the others, it, it makes conditions better and, it, and it's not something that's just going to happen straight away. And I think most of you here that have been clients for a long time will understand that we're not just going to jump in and get into something just because we think it's going to go up overnight. We're there for a long, a long haul, and we really just because I've mentioned them here also doesn't mean that they're stocks that we've got access to either because we really want to stick to some of the best quality businesses. So how is that really, really affected? Last week, coincidentally, the market was up 1.5 percent, and this was really. Not perhaps because of the government, but there's a couple of really good things that happened overseas as well. But interestingly enough, and something that's worth pointing out, uh, this is a chart of the All Lords Accumulation Index. And uh, this is the peak just prior to the GFC. And obviously got down fairly low. I think it was probably a fall close to 40%. But we're just reaching that peak again. Now that may be not necessarily uh, maybe not necessarily aligned to the coalition getting back in, and it, it is probably more of a general conference, but uh, you can see the difference. Uh, the ASX 200 still sort of 1,000 to 1,500 points off of its peak, whereas the accumulation index um, really demonstrates the difference between the dividends and, and the ASX 200, which is just, just the capital price. And I was, saying, I was saying to one of my clients before that it really represents sort of where we've been invested, some of the, the dividends over time, and a lot of you will, will have uh, lived off that income for, for that period, particularly in the post-GFC era through that. 